Chen Fan was the hero's name, and he moved to a different world when he was 10 years old. Chen Fan teleported to the new world, where he was joyfully dancing and boasting about his god of needlework feet. He was also the system's host, and at that very moment, his system, the greatest deity of all Dao systems, appeared. Dao system tried to be pleasant, and she complimented him on his work. But in her mind, she was thinking otherwise because Chen had mentioned that as a man, he would never do anything like embroidery. Chen Fan approached her with excitement in his eyes, and requested her to teach him how to cultivate. But the system, refused, telling him not yet. Chen Fan responded perfectly, assuring her that he had fulfilled all of the chores she had assigned him. Zither, calligraphy, painting, poetry, music, martial arts, agriculture, forestry, heading, and fishing are among the tasks. He then yelled at her that he did all trades and professions to compete for the title of God. He then yelled once more. Chen was enraged since it took him 10 years to finish all of the chores she assigned to him. He asked her if she knew how he had spent the previous 10 years. As she tried to laugh it all off, the system felt a little sorry. She then asked him if she hadn't accompanied him for the last 10 years. Chen Fan simply reminded her that her so-called accompanying is that he practices while she merely watches, eats, and sleeps. The system turned away, and she tried to make an explanation, telling Chen Fan that she needed to relax. Chen Fan inquired if she was unable to practice, she felt agony in her chest as a result of what Chen Fan stated. She was upset as the Supreme God turned around, he misinterpreted what she desired for him. Chen was perplexed because he had no idea what she was on about. The system notified him that the host had learned all system skills and that the hosting mode will be activated in three seconds. What is the hosting mode? Chen inquired. His clothing were taken off, and a blue glow surrounded him. Chen Fan teleported somewhere, and he asked if she was playing with him, and he cursed her angrily. His dog noticed Chen approaching and was relieved to see his owner. Chen said joyfully that Xiao Bai is amazing and that he can hear his voice through the door and that he's not that horrible. Xiao Bai approached him, and when he looked up, he was stunned and shocked. When Chen Fan noticed Xiao Bai's stunned expression, he told his dog that he had an accident. He was embarrassed because his dog just sweated as he complimented him for covering this area of the Manhua. He then hugged his dog and whined that the system was more dog than he was. He grumbled, that the system claimed she would teach him how to cultivate after he learned all traders and professions. But the dog didn't pay attention because he was uncomfortable with Chen Fan holding him, and Xiao Bai was thinking in his head that he didn't have this fetish. But Chen Fan didn't care since he kept talking, telling him that he didn't anticipate her to be so bad, and also directly letting him to farm online. Chen Fan was taken aback when he realized he was in this place. The realm of demonic tranquility and natural martial arts. Chen Fan saw a demonic beast but mistook it for a normal hawk, assuming he was already here and didn't need to do anything. Without her restraints, he reminded himself that tomorrow is a big day, and he'll go out to learn from a master. His dog only stared at him, tired from trying to break free from his hug. Chen Fan scratched his dog, sensing that he was hungry, and informed him that they would play a hunting game today if he waited for him to pack things. His dog was so delighted that he leapt on Chen Fan, shouting for his dog not to jump on him since he didn't have any clothes on. I can't believe this is when Chen Fan realized he didn't have any clothing on. On the other hand, we witness a terrible beast swooping around, attempting to kill someone. When the wicked beast attacked, a beautiful woman yelled that her jade sword sect would not spare him. Yi Qingwu was the Jade Sword Sect Master's daughter. The evil beast talked cynically to her, telling her that the third and seventh elders of their Jade Sword Sect had long since deserted to their Beast Sect. He informed her that the Jade Sword Sect was already in the hands of their young patriarch. Black Hawk was one of the Hundred Beast Sect's four guardians. Yi Qingwu was taken aback, thinking that this was inconceivable and that her father had to be alright. The horrible beast yelled, it's best to take care of herself first. Yi Qingwu was stunned and terrified, unable to defend herself against the wicked beast's attack. And the horrible beast struck, and Yi Qingwu screamed in agony. And Yi Qingwu began to plummet from the sky, thinking that if she could land in the mountains or forest, its flying power would be reduced, and she would have a chance to fight back. At worst, they'll perish together. 
The nasty beast figured out what she was up to. He asked her if she was attempting to dupe him into landing in the mountains or woodland to battle him in close combat. He questioned if she believed he was so dumb. And the terrible beast attacked her with his long-range strike. Yi Qingwu is aware that she has been observed, and that the strength gap between the early and late stages of the martial arts spirit is too great. Yi Qingwu was covered in bruises and wondered if this was the best she could accomplish. Meanwhile, Chen was preparing to shoot an arrow from a cliff in the background and he exclaimed in amazement that he had seen the great eagle again. He was preparing to fire his arrow at it, and at that instant, Chen transformed into a god of archery, shouting to Xiao Bai once again that they would enjoy roasted big eagle tonight, and he didn't see that his bow and arrow were flashing gold. The terrible beast was offended and yelled, he is a hawk. He instructed Chen to shoot him. As an arrow was heading right for Chen, the wicked beast used his technique to deflect the arrow. But the arrow pierced the wicked beast's technique, and he was stunned as he sweated bullets in dread, wondering how this was possible. As the arrow pierced the terrible beast's chest, it yelled out in agony. He died slowly, and his final thought was that he had been shot by M. Mortal. Yi Qingwu approached the wicked beast to see how it died, and when she looked closer, she noticed a Dao pattern, which startled her. This arrow actually has a Dao design on it. Xiao Bai hurried towards her, his heart racing, and Yi Qingwu looked up as he saw Xiao Bai sprinting towards her. Chen Fan yelled at Xiao Bai to calm down, and no one was going to rob him. Yi Qingwu heard Chen Fan's voice and wondered if this was the name of the dog. Xiao Bai plunged off the cliff because he wanted to be closer to her, and his aura and presence were sensed by Yi Qingwu. Yi Qingwu was taken aback. What a powerful demonic chi! She realized after experiencing the extent of his power that this dog is a peak martial arts spirit. She stood up and began to wonder if this person, Chen, could choose a martial spirit demonic beast as a pet, and she assumed that the owner must be strong, and she was relieved to believe that the Jade Sword Sect had been saved. Chen Fan was glancing at Yi Qingwu a few minutes later. He then inquired of Xiao Bai as to why there was someone present. His dog was not paying attention. Instead, he was staring at something else for no apparent reason. Anyway, Yi Qingwu was shocked since she couldn't see the qi of this martial art, and she assumed that this was due to an expert's hidden qi. And when Chen Fan saw Yi Qingwu's loveliness, he flushed and believed she was as lovely as the fairy in the picture. His dog gave him that expression because his heart was racing. Yi Qingwu knelt in respect and murmured softly, Senior, please save. But before she could say anything else, she began to lose consciousness. However, before she could totally close her eyes, she noticed Chen Fan approaching her with concern, and she realized she had reached her limit, and Chen Fan wondered what had happened to her. Chen Fan rescued her before she fell and further injured herself. The protagonist was shocked that she could hang on till now while being so seriously injured, and he assumed she must be a martial artist. The protagonist told himself that the following step was up to her. Despite being crowned god of medicine, he had one flaw, his medical knowledge was limited to mortals. He is unsure whether martial artists will work. Chen Fan looked at his hand and stated that if he could cultivate as well, he would be able to heal her easily. Suddenly, the door swung wide, and someone or something inquired, wouldn't I be able to fly as well? It was his dog, I guess. Chen Fan speed walked yelled at Xiao Bai not to rush him, and said, let's pluck the birth feathers. Yi Qingwu awoke an hour later, shocked that her wounds were healed, and she realized she had been unconscious for nearly an hour, according to the shadow of the sun what impressed me about her was that she had a correct perception. Yi Qingwu was dubious of that master, she corrected herself, and concluded that senior, Chen Fan was unquestionably a recluse master. And if he can enlist the assistance of the senior, she will be able to eliminate the Hundred Beast sect. She was thrilled, though, as she turned side to side on the bed, thinking about how soft and comfortable this bed was. She became startled when she noticed something. She looked around the bed, noticed a light blue aura, and recognized the pattern on the bedstead in the qi on the mattress. She knew there was no mistake. It was the Dao and qi pattern. She was briefly whisked to another dimension when she looked up and noticed the writing and painting on the wall. The world she was in was so magnificent that the heavens were covering the mountains, and when she spotted two holy beasts, she knew she was in the mortal palace holy land. 
she was astonished once more when she spotted a large scroll and realized it wasn't the divine martial content. This was a more potent force. She read a portion of what was written on the scroll. The yellow river gets its water from the sky. She was suddenly transported to a martial arts metal stage after reading this. She was taken aback when she saw how quickly her strength was developing just by reading these few lines. Her strength advanced to a martial spirit late stage, but it didn't stop there, it continued to grow until it reached the martial spirit peak. Her eyes shone with strength. She was sweating bullets once her powers had finished increasing, realizing the world she was in was hidden in the picture, assisting her to enlightenment. What is this technology? She wondered. Chen Fan passed by and noticed she was awake. Yi Qingwu was a little worried, so she asked him where he came from. Chen Fan gazed at her calmly, perplexed by what she was saying. Chen Fan assumed she was referring to his birthplace and asked if she had ever heard of Earth. Yi Qingwu reddened slightly as she pondered the Earth? I feared she was going to suffer whiplash from turning her head so quickly. She wondered if this was the world shown in the artwork, however, she realized that she had never heard of it. She knew she couldn't be too clueless in front of an expert just now. Chen Fan wondered whether anyone knew where the earth was and if he could still return. Meanwhile, Yi Qingwu noticed that the world in the painting is quite similar to the Forbidden Land in the legends. She then informed him that she was familiar with the planet Earth. Chen Fan exclaimed in surprise, has she heard of it? He was so surprised that he began to sweat. She began to explain how Earth is analogous to the divine martial material in their ancient legends. It is also the location where the spiritual aura is dense and substantial, with old beasts strewn across the highlands. And, just as powerful people may handpick stars, powerful demonic animals can devour the sun and moon. She said all of this while smiling. She explained further by saying, Many martial artists have fantasized about the sacred land of cultivation. Chen Fan was taken aback and wondered, is Earth really that awesome? He asked himself again if she was certain they were talking about the same location. He asked her if she really knew where the Earth was. Yi Qingwu fake coughed, thinking that what she was saying was real, and that the senior possessed enormous powers that had come from the Forbidden Land to break the emptiness. She made a shaky motion with her head. She knew that the Forbidden Country had long been a mystery existence, with only a few divine martial warriors knowing where it was. She smiled brightly and informed him that she was in no position to know such secrets. Chen Fan looked at her with cold eyes, and he wondered if this girl's brain was normal. Chen Fan was surprised when she kneeled and inquired what she was doing. She begged him to accept her as a disciple, and will serve him for the rest of her life in exchange for saving her life. Chen Fan was speechless, and he assumed she had a mental illness. And she's a martial artist who worships a M mortal as her master. Yi Qingwu was sweating profusely and wondered what she was doing. She began to believe that Senior had protected her, healed her, and even assisted her in breaking through, and this was already a huge help, nonetheless, she wishes to revere him as her lord. Chen Fan approached her, and she looked up to see his stern expression, thinking he was angry? I guess Yi Qingwu felt Chen Fan was about to do something else when he touched her neck to check her temperature. Chen Fan moved closer to her almost touching their noses and lips, but before they could, he mumbled, you don't have a fever. He grinned brightly and motioned for her to take his hand in hers. Yi Qingwu was red-faced. She was taken aback by his grin and generosity, as well as possibly something else. Chen Fan simply replied calmly, reminding her that he was only a mortal, and that she should stop referring to him as his master. For some reason, there was a light behind him when he said this. A minute later, the light disintegrated, and Yi Qingwu yelled in fear that Chen Fan had dubbed himself M Mortal, she believed she had truly offended him. Chen Fan just gazed at her, perplexed. She kneeled once more, depressed about what kind of person she was. She wondered how she might make Senior treat her like a simple M Mortal. And she thought she wasn't qualified to be a slave or a servant. Chen Fan turned around and went, telling her she might rest a bit longer, and the power of misunderstanding intervened, and when Yi Qingwu glanced at his back, she wondered why Chen Fan called himself immortal. She started to believe that the senior is posing as immortal in order to experience recreational in the human realm. 
Yi Qingwu became enlightened when she realized that loving him as her master had exposed his cover and troubled him, as well as seeing this realm, and she assumed Chen Fan was displeased. She tightened her hand and refused to give up, telling herself that she had to fix it. She exited the room, thinking Chen wanted to perfect his heart through this realm, so she chose to treat him as a mortal in order to be closer to him. And she will make him happy. Yi Qingwu considered Chen Fan, as one would expect of a master of skill and ingenuity. Meanwhile, Chen Fan was cooking the horrible beast he had captured. Yi Qingwu was still staring at Chen Fan, thinking about how he claimed to be immortal, and he's so subtle and attractive that he doesn't betray the chi of a martial artist. Meanwhile, Chen Fan was drooling and speaking cheerfully, it certainly smells wonderful, and how it lived up to his title as God of Cooking. Yi Qingwu bowed respectfully, telling Chen Fan she was a young and innocent girl who had insulted him, she begged him to forgive her. Chen Fan just glanced at her lazily, as if her brain had returned to normal after arrest, and how it now appears much more normal. Chen Fan smiled brightly at her, assuring her that she was on her feet again, he inquired as to her well-being. Yi Qingwu embarrassed and approached him, asking him shyly, that she hasn't asked his name, Chen Fan grinned and told her that his name was Chen Fan and that she might call him by his first name. Yi Qingwu said that she would address him as Sir Chen. If it's okay with him, Yi Qingwu told him to name her Xiaowu. Chen Fan presented her the meat, informing her that black hawk meat is delicious. Xiaowu was taken aback and astonished to learn that this was the black hawk, one of the hundred beast sect's four guardians, she wondered how it could have been roasted in this manner. Chen Fan then inquired if he would like to share it with him. Xiao Wu became uneasy and manufactured an excuse. She thanked him for his thoughtfulness at first, but she has other pressing matters to attend to and doesn't want to disturb him right now. Chen Fan rose up and told her he'd see her off, but Xiao Wu stepped back in horror before he could. She was stuttering in terror, begging Chen Fan not to bother seeing her off because she was leaving right now. She was shivering in terror as she feared the awful beast. But, on the other hand, it's natural why she's shaking with dread. In any case, eating an evil beast is similar to eating a demon. Xiao Wu was terrified and jumped away from Chen Fan. Chen Fan smiled, thinking to himself, as is typical of martial artists, about how she can soar and disappear right off the ground. He then wondered when he will become a martial artist. Meanwhile, many people were found dead at the Cloud Sword sect. Others who were still alive, on the other hand, were battling. Beasts were fighting humans. Even though the man fighting all of these beasts was exhausted, he spoke to the other people he was looking at, Yang Tai and Li Tiaxin, and cursed both of them. He coughed up blood while telling them how beautifully he had always treated them. He then questioned them, asking why they had betrayed the sect and joined the foreign adversary. Yi Jing Hong was the patriarch of the Cloud Sword sect. The muscular man Li Tiaxin responded, explaining that he had been locked at the top of the martial arts spirit realm for 30 years and couldn't break through. He inquired as to what the objective of everyone following him was. The old man with the long beard also responded, informing him that the Cloud Sword sect would be destroyed by the Hundred Beast sect sooner or later, and how they made the right decision. Yi Jing Hong exclaimed, how shameless they were and if it wasn't for them collaborating with the Hundred Beast sect to attack him, but he was cut off before he could continue. With an arrogant smile, this jerk approached and told Yi Jing Hong to quit. A sensible man, he told Yi Jing Hong, conforms to circumstances. This conceited jerk offered Yi Jing Hong the option of joining his Hundred Beast sect in exchange for a potion as an elder. Qin Hao is the Hundred Beast sect's youthful master. Yi Jing Hong was enraged, shouting that he wanted him, Yi Jing Hong, to surrender. He told the conceited jerk that the Hundred Beast sect is unworthy. Qin Hao, the arrogant bastard, responded calmly, urging him to help him kill him then. Yi Qingwu arrived to the rescue, floating in the air, and yelled for Yang Tai and Li Tiaxin, calling them shameless traitors. When Qin Hao, Yang Tai, and Li Tiaxin looked up, they saw Yi Qingwu still shouting at them from the skies. Yi Qingwu took out a blade and told them that she would clean up the sect today. Yang Tai and Li Tiaxin exchanged glances and giggled. Li Tiaxin expressed his concern that the beauty might flee, but he didn't expect her to return so soon to die. 
Yi Jing Hong yelled at Xiao Wu, wondering why she had returned and telling her to hurry up. But she didn't pay attention as she gently told her father to leave this battle to her. His father told her to quit babbling. Qin Hao is at the pinnacle of his martial arts abilities, and she is no match for him. He called out to her again, telling her he'd hold them off and that she should flee. Qin Hao smirked cynically and ordered his men to kill Yi Jing Hong and capture Yi Qingwu, to which both Li Tiaxin and Yang Tai reacted promptly. Yi Qingwu whispered, ungrateful traitors die, and his father was astonished to hear this. Li Tiaxin and Yang Tai were stunned and sweating bullets as they recognized this was peak martial spirit. Both understood she had reached the pinnacle of the martial spirit realm. How could it be possible? They wondered but they will never know since Yi Qingwu attacked them both with her dagger. Qin Hao, the arrogant bastard, was sweating bullets as he yelled that she was still in the early stages of martial spirit. He then questioned her ability to complete three stages in one day. His father was astounded as well, that his daughter was so courageous. Xiao Wu was furious as she pointed to Qin Hao and told him it was his turn. Qin Hao yelled for his men to go, his men were all taken aback. While they were fleeing, Qin Hao glanced at them and yelled at them, warning them the Cloud Sword sect will be destroyed. And he yelled again for the Hundred Beasts cult to leave. The Sword sect was relieved, shouting that they had triumphed and cheering that they had kept the sect. Yi Jing Hong was still taken aback. What the hell was going on, he questioned Yi Qingwu. We now hear about Yuha Island which is located in the actual East China Sea archipelago of the divine martial content and is governed by Chilling. On the island, there are three prominent sects, the Hundred Beasts sect, the Cloud Sword sect, and the Scared Sound Valley sect. The Cloud Sword sect's nameless mountain is located on the east side. That is where Chen Fan resides. Yi Qingwu told his father where she was and who she met a few minutes later. His father glanced at her and told her that if what she had claimed was true, the senior was from the forbidden country of Earth, and she had overrated herself in worshipping him. Yi Qingwu sighed and glanced down. She admitted to her father that it was her fault. And, thankfully, senior Chen Fan was gracious and did not dispute with her. Yi Qingwu had an idea and recommended to her father that they simply fly up to the mountain. Yi Jinghong exclaimed, What does she know? They can only express their respect to their forefathers by strolling. He showed her a peculiar pendant, and he urged his daughter to present this cloud sword jade disc to the senior as a way of repaying him for his life-saving grace. Although the cloud sword jade disc is their sect's inherited jewel, Yi Qingwu expressed concern to his father that Chen Fan might not enjoy the jade disc. Yi Jinghong revealed to his daughter that the cloud sword jade disc is naturally worthless in the eyes of senior, Chen Fan. But they must also offer their most valuable possession to demonstrate their sincerity. Although Qin Hao was temporarily repulsed, Yi Jinghong understood that the Hundred Beasts sect would return, and the Cloud Sword sect could only survive by hanging to the thighs of a senior like him. After a few hours, Yi Qingwu pointed to Chen Fan's house and informed his father that they were almost there. Her father was relieved because he had been exhausted by the long walk. When Yi Jinghong touched the bridge with trembling hands, he was stunned and surprised. A gold dao was used to cover the bridge and he noticed the rushing water, which was steaming with spiritual qi. He was astounded to find the entire courtyard covered by the Tao line and auspicious clouds when he peered ahead, the immortal qi is rushing to the sky, as Yi Jing Hong was astonished. Yi Jing Hong was astonished and amazed once more when he beheld Zhang Tianqing, the legendary ancestor of all trees. This was the illustrious ancestor of all veins bundle dragon vine. The bird atop the tree belonged to the famous ancient beast Golden Sun. The crow was staring at Yi Jing Hong when he gazed at it. Yi Jing Hong yelled in disbelief, terrified. Yi Qingwu inquired about her father's well being. Yi Jing Hong screamed in terror because the earth's might was terrible. Meanwhile, Chen Fan was sitting outside his house, muttering to himself that he wanted to live in this world calmly and freely. A knock came at Chen Fan's door. He was astonished to see a visitor? He warned the people on the other side that he was on his way. He was shocked to see Yi Qingwu when he opened the door. And Xiao Wu grinned brightly, apologizing for bothering him again. Chan admirer inquired as to what brought her here. 
Xiao Wu enthusiastically replied, informing him that this was her father, and he had learnt that she had been saved by the senior Chen, and he requested her to bring him here to thank him personally. Yi Jing Hong froze when he saw Chen Fan. When Yi Jing Hong saw the toothpick in Chen Fan's mouth, he began to sweat profusely. And Yi Jing Hong immediately recognized it as a big profound weapon. He recognized that his sect's jade butterfly is merely a middle-level profound weapon that cannot be compared to a toothpick? Chen Fan simply thought to himself that he couldn't meet a guest with a toothpick in his mouth, so he spit it out, and as he did, Xiao Wu and Yi Jing Hong's eyes widened in surprise. And they both resented the fact that the top-grade profound weapon was just spit out on the ground like saliva. Chen Fan invited Xiao Wu and Uncle Yi Jing Hong to join him for a cup of tea, and both consented. Yi Jing Hong kindly advised Chen Fan that it would be better if he called him Old Yi so that he could relax. He was even more surprised when he viewed the inside of the yard, because this was a top quality purple spirit flower? He was astounded by this pool, which was full of spirit springs. While Chen Fan and Xiao Wu were walking, Yi Jing Hong took another look around and noticed that the garden arrangement corresponded to the numbers included in the Heavenly Tao of the Great Diffusion. He wondered if this was indeed the legendary Nine Emptiness returning divine configuration. Chen Fan grinned inside, knowing that this was his masterwork, which he had painstakingly restored after becoming the god of gardens architecture and sculpture. Chen Fan stared at him and asked Old Yi whether he knew anything about gardening and architecture. What does he think about the layout of his courtyard? He inquired. Yi Jing Hong was scared and sweating profusely. He reasoned that because the expert Chen Fan enjoys pretending to be immortal, he would have to play with him like an expert. Yi Jing Hong knew he wouldn't enjoy it if he boated too much. Yi Jing Hong let out a sigh. Suddenly, he began to shout, proclaiming that this mansion was exquisitely built. This pavilion was created nicely, and the plant that was planted here was perfectly positioned. Chen Fan was taken aback. Yi Qingwu was simply humiliated. Chen Fan laughed as he invited both of them in for a cup of tea. He assumed Yi Jing Hong was just a regular farmer. Yi Jing Hong seemed depressed when he heard Chen Fan's chuckle, and Yi Qingwu glanced at him with concern. Chen Fan made the tea inside the house when he finished pouring the tea. Yi Qingwu and Yi Jing Hong both drank the tea. Chen Fan smiled at them, telling them to slow down so they didn't choke. Yi Jing Hong was astounded to discover that this tea carried a terrible spiritual energy. He was startled to learn that there is a specific power that goes through the meridians of the entire body. It also miraculously repaired Yi Jing Hong's past interior injuries. He was astounded that it was more potent than a miracle drug. He exclaimed in delight because his tea was so delicious. Chen Fan wanted to tell Yi Qingwu to sip her tea before it became cold, but he froze in surprise when he saw Yi Qingwu looking at him seductively. Meanwhile, Yi Jing Hong was taken aback when he noticed that after Xiao Wu drank the spiritual tea, she had advanced to the third level of the Jade Heart Sutra at this precise moment. Chen Fan stroked his chin, nervously smiling, and asked Xiao Wu whether she had a soul test stone with her. Yi Qingwu looked surprised at him. She was glad after a few seconds because she was sweating bullets. She was relieved since she had almost addressed him as master. She reprimanded herself, believing it was inexcusable, but she was jolted awake by senior's shout. Chen Fan, she thought, saw right through the oddity of her spirit skill training and stopped it in time. Yi Qingwu answered, saying she had brought it, and she raised her palm, and a blue aura emanated from her ring. It is believed that martial artists have odd rings that can even hold mountains, and it appears that this is true given what is emanating from Yi Qingwu's ring. The martial spirit of martial arts can interact with the soul stone. Chen Fan was astounded by the soul stone. Yi Qingwu smiled uneasily as she told him to place his right hand on the palm impression. And he did precisely as she instructed, placing his palm on the print. Chen Fan was worried. If he has a martial spirit, he would locate a sect, train from a teacher, and finally conquer the world by getting to the top. When he touched the stone, nothing happened, and even a cup of tea time had passed. Even the bug was zipping by at high speed. Yi Qingwu and Yi Jing Hong were taken aback. They couldn't believe Yi Qingwu lacked a martial spirit. Chen Fan was perplexed, informing Yi Qingwu that the soul test stone hadn't moved in a long time and that he didn't know what to do. 
He asked Yi Qingwu if he has a martial spirit. Yi Qingwu was taken aback, she had no idea what was going on. She was so taken aback that she wondered whether the world had gone insane. She couldn't figure out why Chen Fan didn't have a martial spirit. Yi Qingwu sighed, dissatisfied in himself for lacking martial spirit. He turned and went away, he was so depressed that he believed the system had abandoned him and that he was trash. Yi Qingwu asked his father quietly, why doesn't Chen Fan have a martial spirit? Yi Jinghong responded, muttering back to her, how can an expert be devoid of martial spirit? Yi Jinghong revealed that Chen Fan had to have employed a strange method to invalidate the soul test stone, and how deserving he is to be a master. Why should he pretend not to have a martial spirit and be unable to cultivate? Yi Qingwu wondered. As he questioned her, Yi Jinghong became irritated. What exactly does he know? Yi Jinghong reminded her that for an expert, witnessing the joys and sufferings of mortals' existence, whether laughing gleefully or cursing angrily, is all cultivation for the mind and for mortals, and he asked her what was the most painful thing she had ever experienced. Yi Qingwu pondered the most agonizing aspect. Nothing was more terrible to her than not possessing a martial spirit and so being unable to become a martial artist. And how to continually live a vapid and mundane existence, being the most lowly and humble creature on the divine martial content. Chen Fan is allowing himself to feel the sorrow and misery of not having a martial spirit and not being a martial artist, Yi Jinghong thought. Meanwhile, Chen Fan gazed up at the magnificent sky, still pained by what had occurred. Yi Jinghong was serious when he told her that this was a fantastic opportunity. Yi Qingwu confronted her father. What exactly does he mean? His father explained, instructing her to soothe Chen Fan, to allow him feel the warmth of the mortal world and grow her mind, and to do so, Chen Fan will comprehensively, will undoubtedly remember her. Chen Fan closed his eyes and imagined that he could do whatever he wanted with the system and reach the summit, but he didn't expect this to happen. He ragedly opened his eyes, pointing to the sky and cursing her. Why is she teasing him like this? He asked. He didn't notice Yi Qingwu approaching him when he was yelling at the system. But he did hear her ask him if he was all right. Chen Fan turned around to see Yi Qingwu smiling warmly at him, telling him that the soul test stone she brought might have a problem. She consoled him, assuring him that even if he couldn't become a martial artist, it was okay to be immortal. Chen Fan was taken aback when she comforted him, he also thanked her. Yi Qingwu showed her their family heirloom, she told him he saved her life, and she begged him to accept this jade butterfly. Chen Fan was taken aback and assumed it was a sign of love? He examined the heirloom and thought the jade was good, but he was hesitant to accept it because the carving was terrible. And he believed it should be too valuable to accept. Yi Qingwu was cheerfully smiling. She could see from the look on his face that the jade butterfly was nothing special. Yi Jinghong was also aware of this. Yi Qingwu kept smiling. She informed him that it was becoming late and that they would be returning. Chen Fan gently informed them that he would send her. Yi Jinghong felt ashamed when he asked Chen Fan to assist him in throwing out the garbage. Chen Fan was perplexed, supposing that Yi Jinghong must have suffered greatly in order to pay for Xiao Wu's cultivation. After a minute, he consented with a smile. He showed him the black hawk flesh and told him how nice it tastes and how nutritious it is, and how it tastes like a snack, and how he can carry it with him. Yi Jinghong expressed gratitude for the beef. In their imaginations, Yi Jinghong and Yi Qingwu pleaded with Chen Fan not to send them away. Chen Fan bid them farewell and yelled out for Xiao Wu, inviting her to come play if she had time. With a cheerful smile, Yi Qingwu agreed. Meanwhile, someone sitting on the throne spoke to the arrogant bastard Qin Hao, telling him that Yi Qingwu only possesses an early stage martial spirit, but she broke through three times in such a short period of time, and how it's truly unthinkable. Qin Hao responded that he doubted Yi Qingwu had come upon such a nice opportunity. Only if they obtained the elixir offered by Sir Envoy and were able to break through to the summit from the early stages, one after the other, said the ogre to the arrogant bastard. But he was nonetheless curious as to how Yi Qingwu had broken through three times in a succession. This was the Hundred Beast Sex Master, Qin Peng. Qin Hao, the arrogant bastard, replied, saying that's why he's temporarily fled, to ask father to decide. 
The ogre then turned to Envoy, who was standing next to him. What is his opinion? Envoy's one eye shone brighter, and he spoke, assuring them that there are just stories on Yuha Island, and Taoist Huoyun's treasure can only go so far. The arrogant bastard smirked viciously, declaring that this was a fantastic opportunity, and how no one has discovered it in hundreds of years. Envoy warned them that if the Hundred Beast sect can take advantage of this opportunity, they will become more powerful. The arrogant bastard bowed and begged his father to give him an order. He told him that as his son, he is willing to lead the sect's elite to wipe out and steal the treasure of Taoist Huoyan. The ogre said that this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance. The envoy instructed the ogre to spread the word that the Cloud Sword sect had obtained the treasure of the Taoist Huoyan. The ogre explained what envoy truly meant, and he requested that they allow them to have a dogfight. Envoy smirked cynically, knowing that they would simply sit back and take the profits. The ogre and his kid both smirked at this, and there was darkness all around the Hundred Beast sect. Yi Qingwu told her father to come here after Yi Jinghong and Yi Qingwu departed Chen Fan's compound. She instructed her father to open it. Inside is a high-quality tool. Yi Jinghong agreed and, shocked, opened the box. He was shaking with awe since the tool he was holding had such a powerful aura. Yi Jinghong exclaimed, stunned, that Chen Fan's junk is truly a tool worthy of being the world's powerhouse. Yi Jinghong let go of the toothpick that Chen had been using earlier. He was stunned when he held the toothpick in his hand, because he knew that if somebody used the toothpick's power, even a sliver of it might demolish a whole mountain. Yi Qingwu was astounded when she told her father that Chen's valuables were terrifying. Yi Jinghong remembered that he had originally intended to return to the sect, to immerse himself in the incense Chen Fan had given him, and to enjoy it. But it was so appealing, and he wanted to consume the meat Chen Fan had given him. Yi Qingwu told his father that this isn't much meat, but he should eat first. Yi Jinghong nibbled the flesh while closing his eyes. He was taken aback after chewing into his meat, and he was surprised this meat has such spiritual strength and flavor. He suddenly began to consume the meat like a ravenous lion, and when he was finished, he dropped the box. And he yelled as he exploded with power, unsure what to make of this spiritual strength. Yi Jinghong was stunned, unsure whether he had broken through. Yi Qingwu was astounded as well, because her father had been locked at the Martial Spirit Pinnacle for 30 years, and he would never have been able to break through with his qualifications. But after eating Chen Fan's stick of meat, Chen Fan changed her father's fate. When Yi Jinghong discovered what had occurred, he praised the senior for his advice, he will never forget his wonderful kindness and virtue, and he bowed repeatedly in thanks. Yi Qingwu was disappointed because Chen Fan had asked her to remain for supper but she had declined, and now she was sorry she didn't remain. And now that she's missed her chance, she's not sure when she'll be able to enjoy Chen Fan's delectable pork again. The next day, an ant began to stir. Meanwhile, Xiao Bai was happily chasing a bird, which chirped in terror. When the bird approached Chen Fan, his dog came to a halt and shuddered in terror, understanding Chen Fan was there. Meanwhile, Chen Fan was focused on his inventory, and as he was doing so, he cursed because he had no more space in his inventory, and so he couldn't bring a tent. He was going down the hell to find a place to set up camp after glancing through his inventory. While he was walking down the hill, a bird landed on his shoulder and stroked its head against his cheek. He laughed cheerfully, saying that he'd seek for the soul test stone that the sects utilized, and that bringing his dog and bird along would be inconvenient. His dog was running around him, staring at him in awe. He directed Xiao Bai, his dog, and Xiao Nayo, his bird, to look after the house until he returned. His dog glanced at him as he walked away, and as soon as he was out of sight, his pets converted into their original forms, and his bird instantly boasted that his owner patted him and even called him by name. His dog objected, but his master called him by name first, and he will always be number one in his master's heart. This was Xiao Nayo, the celestial phoenix, and Xiao Bai, a wolf rather than a dog. Other unknown beings, such as that ant, appeared, and the ant sighed, grumbling that this was the 10,086th time his master hadn't employed him. This was the legendary demonic ant. Bundled Dragonvine inquired if the master intended to act like a commoner attempting to follow the path of the Tao. 
Xiao Bai became enraged and informed them that it was none of their business, and he asked the ant why the master hadn't contacted him because what credentials does he have to be summoned? The demonic ant screamed angrily that his master hadn't kicked him out, and thus he must be aware of his existence. Because he didn't identify Chen, Xiao Bai assumed he hadn't been kicked out. The demonic ant began to mourn silently as he refused to believe that his lord would desert him, because he is entrusting him with his life. The heavenly tree elder told them that this was wonderful because it meant that there were more people with great spiritual energy, and that they would protect the house that their master had entrusted to them. Chen arrived in Qingxi town and smiled as he greeted the merchants, who returned his smile. What kind of goodies did he bring to the market today? inquired the other merchant seated nearby. But before he could say anything, a mysterious woman whispered in his ear, assuring him that the Escort sect is patiently awaiting his return. Chen shuddered in horror as she breathed a scorching breath against his ear. Chen leapt away in terror, yelling at her not to come near him. The enigmatic woman simply smiled at him and told him to relax, they wouldn't eat him. They're not going to change him. Chen simply turned around and rushed away, not bothering to thank the woman. Someone suddenly grabbed his hand as he shouted out to him, Young master, come and sit, we will discuss today's new dishes, and he must investigate. Chen acknowledged him as his superior. Chen realized that business was still thriving. The boss grinned and gently told him that they all relied on young master to teach them how to cook, and the Fuyuan Inn was becoming increasingly vibrant. The boss began to sweat as he told him that recently, Qingxi has become more vibrant, and they don't know why, but a lot of martial artists have been drawn and have taken up residence on the second level. He asked him if he wanted to stay on the first floor for a while. Chen then began to ascend. Martial artists and mortals are extremely different, according to Chen, and he guessed that Boss Wang was probably concerned that he would be uncomfortable sitting on the second floor. And he was well aware that martial artists do not eat humans. What's there to be afraid of? He asked himself. Chen grinned and said, no problem, and that he'd go to the second floor. Boss Wang agreed and ordered him to sit comfortably. A cup of sake crashed in front of Chen, causing him to cry, and Boss Wang clapped his hand for some inexplicable reason. Chen was spying on the master of one of the martial artists. Another conceited jerk was speaking with someone on the floor, and he inquired if he wasn't Xiaoyan, the Lin family's genius, and why is he working in such a rundown establishment? but the individual on the floor remained silent. People began to wonder about Lin Xiaowu. They began to question whether he wasn't the prodigy who began martial arts at the age of eight and had a martial spirit breakthrough at the age of nine. The other idiot just murmured. It's too bad that when he turned ten, he suddenly lost all of his spiritual skills and became useless, and the Lin family kicked him out. Chen frowned and wondered why this narrative seemed so familiar. The guy on the ground clenched his teeth in rage, thinking that if it hadn't been for that blasted old man consuming his spiritual abilities, he wouldn't be here. The arrogant bastard smiled arrogantly at him and dropped the coins on the floor, then told him to kneel in front of him three times and he'd tip him a gold coin. Xiaoyan Lin? Lin Dong was infuriated as he clenched his fist and murmured his name. He stood up and demanded that he stop bullying people, and the Lin family had already abandoned him. What else does he want? He turned and went away, but the arrogant guy yelled at him to stop right there, and he questioned him, saying, who said he couldn't leave? Lin Xiaoyan responded that he is a bully who always bullies the vulnerable. Lin Xiaoyan generally talks to himself, according to Boss Wang. Boss Wang told Chen that if it hadn't been for an elderly guy draining away his martial spirit, he would not have been expelled out of the Lin family and his fiance would not have cancelled the wedding. Chen then inquired as to whether the old man who was torturing him had gone insane. Lin Xiaoyan walked past Chen, and something happened that terrified him. Chen's hand had a faint blue aura that contacted Lin Xiaoyan's body, and the elderly man rushed from Xiaoyan's body. The old guy was scared when he sensed this and Chen's overwhelming aura. Lin Xiaoyan gazed at himself and was relieved that a parasitic old man had fled. Suddenly, he screamed out, the heavens have recognized. Now that the elderly man has passed away, he can finally cease being a servant. Chen couldn't figure out why he was suddenly laughing and sobbing. He suspected he was insane and wanted to assist him, so he approached him to assist him. 
Lin Xiaoyan stared at Chen and understood that the old man was definitely afraid of this guy, and he must have seen his worries and decided to help. He bowed low in respect while exclaiming, Thank you, senior, for your kindness? Chen was taken aback because he had only sought to assist him, he informed him he didn't have to treat him like a god. Chen extended his hand and told him to stand up. And Lin Xiaoyan was astounded but also perplexed as to why he lacked a martial aura. He assumed it was because he was too powerful, so he concealed his abilities, and how this was an opportunity he couldn't pass up. The arrogant jerk exclaimed, trash is trash, and why would he assist him? He yelled once more that he had lost all reputation in the eyes of the Lin family. Lin Xiaoyan was enraged because Chen wanted to say something. He yelled, he could disrespect him all he wanted, but not other people. The arrogant bastard mocked him, claiming that two pieces of trash joined together, so what if he insulted him? What is he going to do about it? Chen put his hand on his shoulder and encouraged him not to be upset. But Chen didn't realize he was giving Lin Xiaoyan his spiritual energy, and Lin Xiaoyan felt it as he was stunned that a touch from the senior could give him this much power and he could feel his terrifying strength running through his body. And his martial spirit was progressively growing. Lin Xiaoyan indicated Lin Dong. He yelled angrily, he was defeated by him years ago, and that will never change. Chen Fan's strength was now surrounding Lin Xiaoyan, and before he could attack, he told him that he would forever be under him. The arrogant jerk attacked while yelling for him to die. And they battled, and the arrogant bastard was stunned because he couldn't believe Lin Xiaoyan possessed martial spirit power. He had no idea how that was possible. And Lin Xiaoyan overwhelmed him, punching him in the face, and blood poured out of his nose. And he crushed on the table, and everyone was astonished, and Chen's eyes widened in surprise because he believed this person was acting weak. He couldn't figure out why a martial artist was working as a servant, and he was convinced he was mad. Meanwhile, Lin Xiaoyan was overjoyed that his power had returned. He continuously bowed, grateful to the senior for restoring his cultivation. Chen glanced at him, puzzled, and wondered if this guy wasn't making fun of him on purpose. Chen Fan was perplexed and questioned Lin Xiaoyan whether he had hit his head on something. Because he is only a mortal, how could he have fixed his cultivation? Lin Xiaoyan was perplexed as to why Chen referred to himself as a mortal. And the power of misunderstanding intervened once more when Lin Xiaoyan believed Chen was resting. And in that scenario, he will not reveal his cover. Before Lin Xiaoyan did anything, Boss Wang told him, as he pointed to the dishes on the table, that those were the last dishes we'd made, and he begged him to kindly try them. Meanwhile, Lin Xiaoyan bowed respectfully and whispered, thanking him for his generosity and virtue, and he made a commitment to say, I, Lin Xiaoyan, will never forget that. And he informed him that he couldn't repay him right now, but that when he became famous, he would be there to help him. He then walked away to retrieve his belongings from the Lin household. While Lin Xiaoyan walked away, Boss Wang poured sake or water into a bowl and told his young master that he can see that he has a bag, he then inquired as to where he intended to travel. Chen responded by saying he was looking for a martial arts sect to join. Boss Wang warmly smiled and told him that with his expertise and talent, those sects must be lining up to hire him. Chen began to suspect that he was worrying for nothing. And what if Xiao Wu's soul test stone actually was broken? But he discarded the idea. Boss Wang spoke up, informing him that the Sacred Sound Valley sect is now holding a martial arts exam in Qinxi. And if he meets the standards, he can enter and train straight under them, so he should give it a shot. Chen exclaimed in astonishment and amazement, as he realized it was the Sacred Sound Valley sect, one of the three great sects. Boss Wang grinned and assured him that if he decided to join the Sacred Sound Valley sect, he would congratulate him ahead of time. Chen began to eat more quickly, believing that the soul test stones in the Sacred Sound Valley were the most powerful. And maybe, just maybe, he still has a chance. He deposited money on the table, and Boss Wang was perplexed as to why he did so. He asked him to please return it. Chen simply walked away, waved farewell, and informed him that he would be attending the martial artist test in the Sacred Sound Valley. That is all for now. If you did enjoy the video, then like, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.